Let's call up patterns in dermatoscopy. What is a pattern? A pattern in dermatoscopy consists of multiple basic elements of the same type. But not only in dermatoscopy. We humans are used to classify objects by their patterns. On the left side you can see a Dalmatian dog. It consists of multiple spots, a pattern of spots. On the right side we can easily identify zebra. It consists of multiple stripes, a pattern of stripes. What does it need to define a pattern, no matter if we deal with animals or with pigmented or unpigmented skin lesions? Well, we need to define the basic elements, because they compose a pattern, and we need to define the arrangement of the basic elements within the pattern. In dermatoscopy, we have very simple basic elements, geometric objects. We use lines, like for example in reticular lines, dots, Clots. What is a clot? A clot is a solid object that is larger than a dot and may have any shape. It may be round, it may be oval, like a clavule, but it also may be large and polygonal, like a cobblestone. We have circles and we have pseudopods. When it comes to pigmented skin lesions, we need all five of these basic elements. For unpigmented skin lesions, for the description of vascular patterns, we do not need pseudopods, because vessels usually do not appear as pseudopods, and we do not need circles. So we are left with lines, dots, and clots. Here we have a pattern of dots, a pattern of dotted vessels. It's a very common vascular pattern in dermatoscopy. This is a nearly unpigmented lesion fueled with the unedited eye. And here the same lesion fueled with dermatoscopy. We can see only a vascular pattern, a pattern of dots, a pattern of dotted vessels. What about clots? This is also a common vascular pattern. In angioma, for example, we have a pattern of clots. What about lines? Well, vessels as lines are more complicated. They may have one band, they may have no band, or they may have more than one band. If they have no band, we call them straight. If they have one band and the band is very sharp, a U-turn we call them looped, in the metaphoric language hairpin. If they have one band but the band is gentle, we call them curved, in the metaphoric language comma-like. If there are multiple bands, we call them serpentine, if there are multiple bands, but the bands are coiled along a central axis, we call the vessels helical. And if the bands are coiled very compactly, we call them coiled, and in the metaphoric language, clomerula. There is also another important message. The vascular pattern may be monomorphous or polymorphous. In a monomorphous vascular pattern, one vessel type dominates by far, whereas in a polymorphous vascular pattern we have multiple types of vessels. For example, you've already seen this. This is a monomorphous vascular pattern. It consists only of dotted vessels. It's important to note that one linear vessel does not make a pattern. A pattern has to cover a significant part of the lesion. This is a monomorphous vascular pattern that consists of dotted vessels only. This is very different. This is a polymorphous vascular pattern. You can see dotted vessels at the periphery, even some coiled vessels, but in the center you see linear vessels, and to be specific, we can see linear serpentine vessels. Very different from the monomorphous vascular pattern that I showed you before. So what does it need to define a pattern? We have defined basic elements, the basic vessel morphology that compose a vascular pattern, and now we have to talk about the arrangement of the vessels. You will hear about the arrangement in the second part of vascular patterns.